Hey guys, this is Skylar. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is really different. Um, you might be wondering why I'm holding this giant grumpy looking teddy bear um, or why I'm dressed fresh out of the 90s. That is because today's video is on my favorite manga. I've been really excited about the prospect of doing this video for a while. I was thinking of filming other videos and then I was just thinking about what I would talk about in a manga video and I started thinking about Sailor Moon and when I think about Sailor Moon I can't help but think about 90s fashion. And so I just sort of subconsciously started dressing and putting my hair up and doing my makeup in a very 90s way. One of the most iconic things about Sailor Moon is the 90s fashion. By the time I was done, I just sort of looked in the mirror and was like, oh, I guess I'm filming my manga video today. You might also notice that my shelves are a little different. I have some additions and I changed things around a little bit. Harry Potter got kicked off for just this once, I promise. He'll be back. Um, but I added some little memorabilia and things that I've collected over the years that are related to some of the manga I'm gonna be talking about today. If you just subscribed to my channel, please, please don't unsubscribe. I promise this is like a one-time thing if you're super not into manga. Um, it's, it's not gonna be super regular. This is just kind of a fun video I've been wanting to do for a long time. If you love manga and comics as well as other books, let me know in the comments and let me know if you enjoy this and would actually like to hear more about different kinds of manga um, because I am currently reading a manga series and I have a few that I'm going to talk about today that I'm also planning to start reading. So um, I really hope you guys enjoy this video and here we go. So I have a lot of manga that I want to talk about today. The first manga I actually wanted to talk about is the first manga that I read. I actually did not read Sailor Moon first. I was very into the show as a child while it was first being aired in America in the 90s. I realized a bit later in life, probably when I was around 12, that Sailor Moon was actually a manga and I got really interested in it, but unfortunately the rights had actually been pulled from America by the original artist. So yeah, good job America, <laughs> really messed it up. So I'm pretty sure it was just like unavailable in America for like 15 years. So <laughs> um, yeah, first the first manga that I ever read ended up finding Tokyo Mew Mew. And this is an adorable series. I believe there are seven books in the original series, but then there are an additional two books that are called Tokyo Mew Mew a la mode. And they are sort of a sequel um, because the main character is not in those last two books, which is this character right here who is on the front cover. I really love these books. They have that magical girl vibe that you also get from Sailor Moon. They're really cute. They're a little juvenile. They definitely are aimed toward um, kids that are a little younger. So they were perfect for me when I was like 11, 12 when I first started picking them up. The main character, Ashigo, is 11 years old and she, she goes on a date with her then sort of boyfriend and um, something strange happens basically and her genes get mixed with the genes of an extinct cat breed. It's so strange but basically this happens to four other girls and they all have their genes mixed with an exotic animal's genes that are extinct and it turns them kind of into superhero characters so when she transforms into her super self she has cat ears and a tail and the other characters have different little attributes to the animals that their genes are mixed with um it ends up being kind of an experiment by these other two guys and they all end up working together to defeat these aliens that are attacking the earth and tokyo of course because aliens always attack tokyo i don't know what's up with that but yeah so um it all goes down in tokyo every time if you're just starting out in manga or if you have a young reader who's interested in manga i highly suggest it there's nothing too risque about it it's really really cute and it's just it's just an adorable series and even if you're older i think you just find yourself smiling reading this it's it would definitely be a fun distraction with everything going on right now in the world so the next series that i know a borders employee definitely helped me find and thank you borders employee whose name i do not know but she seemed super cool and she told me about this series which is Fruits Basket. And I picked up the first book. I had told her that I had finished Tokyo Mew Mew and I wanted something else and that I liked Sailor Moon. 
and she pointed me toward fruits basket and i am so so glad that she did because this random stranger totally changed my life this book series is absolutely breathtaking it starts out super cutesy so if you're a fan of cutesy fun light-hearted stories you will enjoy it um, but then it actually goes quite dark, much darker than you would think this series could go if you're just picking it up out of the blue and reading the first couple books. I am super impressed with the depth that this story goes into. It is about a girl named Toru Honda. So Toru, her mother died when she was young. Her father died when she was even younger and she lives with her grandfather and her aunt, I believe, but there is strange construction going on in their house and it would be easier for them if she moves out. So she decides to just on her own go live in the woods in a tent because apparently that makes sense, this poor girl. Anyway, so she's living in a tent in, in what she thinks is a random stretch of woods. So this boy that goes to her school, his name is Yuki and he's super popular and it turns out that she is living on his property. He is part of the Soma family. So him and his cousin end up finding her, living in her tent on their property. They let her come into their house and she offers to do all the cleaning for them because basically they are two very slobby guys living together. They don't know how to cook. They don't know how to clean. And she offers to help them out if they let her stay there. And they accept the offer, even though it's probably a horrible idea because it comes into conflict with the secret they're trying to keep which is that basically their family is cursed. It is the curse of the Zodiac and they turn into the animals of the Zodiac if they are hugged by someone of the opposite sex. And that sounds like super weird. Whenever I tell people that who aren't really into manga or anime, they're kind of like, what? Like, that's just such a weird premise. And it is, I'm not gonna lie, it is. I can't get over how unique and interesting of an idea this series is. And I'm so, so glad that it is finally getting reanimated. Um, it was animated like back in the early 2000s. They did a horrible, horrible, terrible job. Do not watch the old one. Whatever you do, don't watch it. Even if you don't wanna read the books, don't watch the old anime, watch the new one. It just got released last year, the first season, I believe. And it's so beautiful. And they're following the books so, so perfectly. It really just, <laughs> it does my heart some good, you know? Um, my little nerdy heart. I have reread it multiple times and I'm so, so excited to watch the new animated series as it comes out because it's just like reliving something I hold so near and dear. And my favorite character in the series is Keo, and this is Keo right here. He is the grumpy cat in the background. He's an orange cat and he's so cute. And he is, he was my favorite character from the very beginning. Um, and I just, I just love him. And he's one of my favorite characters like ever. And one day I will have an orange cat and I will name him Keo and the world will be right. The next series I'm gonna talk about though is Like Tokyo Mew Mew is a much shorter series. Um, this series is super humorous. If you just want something hilarious, I highly suggest it. It's called Absolute Boyfriend. And the front looks kind of risky, I'm not gonna lie, but it, it is and it isn't. They, they make more risque jokes in this series than others. Um, it is about a girl, this is, there's no good way to say this. It's about a girl named Rico and she doesn't understand what she's ordering on the computer. She starts designing this new kind of, it's like a sort of AI, um, they call it they're like I forget what they call them in the beginning but they're basically like human-sized robots that are supposed to be lovers <laughs> but she doesn't realize that she's a teenager and she lives in an apartment alone because her parents work away and her best childhood friend lives next door to her and he doesn't really see her like as a girl she wants a boyfriend really badly and she just thinks she's joking around, but she does order this doll from the internet and he comes in this huge box. She doesn't realize how big it is. She doesn't realize it's life size. She doesn't realize how real it will look. Um, nothing is actually explicitly shown, don't worry, but it is implied that he's naked when he arrives and she's like, what is this? Um, and it's just, it's really hilarious. It's basically a tale unfolding of her trying to deal with him because now he's living in her house with her. It's also programmed to be her boyfriend and she 
didn't really realize what she was signing up for. She ends up getting stuck with him. She wants to return him, but she realizes that he was actually worth, I think, I don't know exactly what the translation was, but I was under the impression like something crazy, like he's worth like a million dollars and she accidentally keeps him over his free trial period. When they come to collect the money, she does not have it. And she agrees to keep him around basically so that he can collect data of how to be a better boyfriend. So yeah, it's really, really hilarious. I highly recommend it. It's it's hilarious and it's also just heartwarming. It's really endearing. It's a series that has just stuck with me. It's one of those things that I kind of read at the time like, ooh, this is kind of scandalous and also funny, but I was surprised by how hilarious and heartwarming it ended up being. The next series I want to talk about is the one that has obviously been coming, you guys knew it was coming, is Sailor Moon. This is a super old edition, is the old um, Tokyo Pop like pocket editions. Um, that's what I have the entire series in because I decided when I was a teenager that I didn't want to wait to find out if they would ever relicense the series in America and I bought them all used from a great seller who was selling them online and they actually sold them to me for a super reasonable price which was really hard to find at the time and I'm so pleased that I have them because I think they're just really cute additions. One day I might get the newer editions, which are also really pretty, but just have kind of simpler covers. They're mostly like all white um, and just have one picture, but these are so colorful. They have this adorable, adorable little picture of Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask on the back, and it's so cute. I can't deal with it. This series is really fun. It's actually been a really long time since I've read it. Like I said, I read it like quite a few years ago. So I'm hoping to reread it soon because I also have the Sailor V series, which is just two books. They're kind of a prequel to the Sailor Moon books um, because the author, she actually, um, the artist, I should say, she actually came up with Sailor V before she came up with Sailor Moon. And Sailor V actually becomes Sailor Venus, which is one of the characters in the series who fights with Sailor Moon. She was like the concept character for Sailor Moon and she started fighting crime. I believe it was supposed to be like based in like London or something back before Sailor Moon even knew, like back before she knew she had powers and was just a regular girl and living in Tokyo still. So yeah, Sailor V is interesting. She comes to Tokyo and she ends up being Sailor Venus. So I'm really excited to read these. I've had them for a long time. It's just two books and I've never read them and I don't know why. I got them right when they started coming out with the new editions. That's why it is in the proper formatting because these pocket books are actually facing the other direction, you might be able to tell, which is kind of improper. This was like Americanized. Um, and it is also bigger. It's a much bigger edition and that's how the new Sailor Moon books are as well. But there's not much more I have to say about Sailor Moon. I love Sailor Moon. It's a classic and I highly suggest it to anyone. They're very easy to find now and they're re-releasing the anime in a new dub that is approved by the artist and is finally more correct and it's less censored than America tried to do it before because they censored things so poorly. They just, they made... They made things that they thought were too much for America just so much worse, okay? Um, but yeah, that has to do with the anime though, so I won't even go into that. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so now, we have all come to the moment you've been waiting for, and that is the explanation of the very grumpy teddy bear. That it is a character slash object in the Euron High School Host Club manga series. And this series is so much fun, guys. Basically, this is about a girl who goes to this new school. She gets into this very fancy upscale school where only rich kids go on a scholarship. She has super short hair. She is this character on the front and she kind of wears oversized clothes because she can't afford to buy new clothes. So she couldn't afford to buy the dress that is the dress code for the girls at the school. So she just wears a sweater and pants, which is closer to what the boys wear. And she accidentally goes into a high school host club, which is where this other character back here, he is in charge of, and along with some other very handsome and interesting boys that are all very wealthy. And she kind of like freaks out because she walks into the wrong room. She doesn't know where she is. They start assuming she's a boy. She bumps into a vase that is very expensive, knocks it over, 
and they tell her that she has to come and serve and be a part of their host club since she can't afford to pay them back for it. They eventually realize she's a girl and they do keep her secret and she continues to dress like a boy and pretend to be a boy in the host club. Meanwhile, the members all develop quite a soft spot for her. Haruhi is the girl's name. It's an adorable story. It turns into a bit of a romance. It's really cute. It's another long one. I think it's up to 20 books at least. It might be over 20. It's really, really cute. And there's an adorable anime adaption that is actually really well done. It doesn't conclude. Um, so I do suggest kind of reading the books because the books have more of a conclusion to them. This bear is in the series. His name is Kuma-chan and I love him. Um, he is this grumpy bear that one of the characters has had forever and really loves. So I love the series so much at the time when I was reading it, which was quite a few years ago, that I had to get this adorable bear when I saw him for sale. So yeah, he's super cute and I like to keep him in my room because he does make me smile every time I look at him. The next series I want to talk about is one that I also got into when I was quite a bit younger, Vampire Night. If you're like me, you grew up with the craze of Twilight also going on in your teen years. And I think at the time, it just got everyone kind of inspired to want to read more vampire books, but also to read better vampire books than Twilight. Um, and this series is a lot of fun. I really love all of the main characters. You've got Yuki is the main character. And then you've got Zero, who is this character here, and Kaname, who is this character here. Kaname over here, who is a vampire, actually found her by herself standing in the snow about to be attacked by a evil vampire. So the headmaster of the school was an old friend of Kaname's and he adopted Yuki to keep her safe and she lives at the school with him. And so she also attends the school, it's called Cross Academy. And Zero is also a student that has been sort of adopted by the headmaster a couple years later. His family was killed by a vampire. He comes from a family of vampire hunters. So he's very anti-vampire. And Yuki is sort of always in the middle of them because she loves them both. Kaname rescued her and Zero is like a brother and best friend to her. Basically, they all go to the same school, but all the vampires go to school at night and all of the human students go to school during the day. So Yuki and Zero as the headmaster's children are the only ones who know that the night students are vampires and they have to keep the night students and the day students separate during the hours when the class is changing over and a lot of times hours into the night. This is kind of a little bit of a fraught like love story. There's a bit of a love triangle going on. It's really, it's just a lot of fun. It's dark, but it's also very cute. It's just, it's a really great vampire series. If you like vampires and you like dark stories, um, I highly suggest it. It also has a really well adapted anime series, but it doesn't really conclude. It leaves you in a super weird place. I will warn you on that one. So if you want to know the full story, I suggest picking up the manga. And the cool part about this is now that it's been a little while since the first series has concluded, when I was reading this, the books were still coming out. But a couple years after this ended, the author announced that she would be doing a new series that actually takes place in the future. And it has a lot of flashbacks to kind of explain what happened there is kind of a time jump at the end of the series where they tell you what happened like i think like a hundred years later and this new series that she's writing that i also have which is called vampire night memories explains what happened in those hundred years while also telling you what is happening after that point as well so it is a really cool series i'm really enjoying it so far there's only three books that have been released but i know fourth book is slated to come out this year and i'm really enjoying revisiting the world i just i love the artwork if you love really beautiful manga artwork i also suggest this one it's just super detailed super gorgeous i'm I'm a big fan, yeah. So I'd highly suggest checking this out and knowing that you have books that are even currently coming out, which is really fun to know so that you don't have to be sad when it's over because it's not over yet. <laughs> so the manga series that I am currently reading and enjoying, it is a very light and fun one. It doesn't have a ton of depth to it, um, but it is Miracle Girls. I found it at a used bookstore. It is that sort of old pocket edition of Tokyo Pop Books. Um, and 
it's just really cute and it reminded me of my old Sailor Moon books so I just couldn't leave them in store I was like oh these are like old like 90s books I must rescue them the illustrations are so cute it's about these twin girls that are um, they're going into high school and they have like telepathic abilities when they're together they're able to teleport it's kind of lighthearted, honestly it's not super dark uh, it's not super in-depth but I'm just enjoying it it's a nice little distraction I've read the first two books and I believe there are only nine in the series so I will be reading this just for fun during this time of stress and it's getting my mind off things and it's just a really cute little book I can usually read like a whole book before going to bed each night so I think I will go through this series really fast and it's just a fun series so the next one is a series that I want to read it is one that I have watched the anime and I'm hoping to be able to read the manga as soon as I can this series is called Nana um, I heard about it when I was much younger, but I wasn't ready to read this type of series. It's a bit more mature. It is about two girls. Um, it kind of does some flashbacks to high school, but they are out of high school. They're older. I would put them probably being 18, 19, early 20s. Um, and they're both named Nana, and they end up sharing an apartment. Um, it, it gets really interesting. One is in a band, and so this series goes a lot into the music industry in Japan, how singers and idols work. It goes into drug usage and alcohol usage and other addictive behavior, basically, um, which Japan is notorious for not really liking to be broadcasted. So this series actually stopped. Um, the anime is beautiful and the anime is even more unfinished than the manga, but the manga is also unfinished and the author, apparently she is sick. She's been sick now for years and that is the reason why she hasn't been able to finish. That is at least the official reason. There are many kind of theories that perhaps the Japanese government told her that she's not allowed to write the series anymore. It's a very controversial series. But I really enjoyed the anime. It took me a little while to get into, but once I did, I really enjoyed it. And I really want to read the manga because I want to get a little further than the anime took me, even though unfortunately the manga is not concluded either. Writer and artist has said that she would like to finish it one day as soon as she's healthy enough. Um, it's very strange, the whole situation. Look it up if you're curious. It, there's some really interesting like theories. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot. But I really do hope she concludes it one day and I really hope I'll get to reading this soon so that I can find out a little bit further of what happens to these characters and hopefully feel a little more satisfied than the anime left me. I think that's basically all. If you guys like this, if you guys want to hear more about manga and comic books, give me a comment below. Let me know that it's something you're interested in um, because I'm happy to talk about it more. I'm just not sure if you guys want that or not. I know it's a little more of a niche in the bookstagram world. I don't even know if it's really on the bookstagram world, but I'm sure it is a niche like in general for readers. My channel will mostly revolve around novels, young adult, adult fantasy, magical realism. So yeah, so please don't unsubscribe just because this video is kind of weird. I know it's weird, but I've been wanting to do it for a long time. And if any of you have been looking for some manga suggestions, I really hope that this has been super helpful. I hope that you have some new things now to look into reading. And if you've never read manga, I hope it gives you some ideas and you want to try one of them out. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books or if you want to, if any of them sound really exciting to you. And also give this video a like down below as well. And please subscribe to my channel. I'm so excited to have been able to talk to more of you in the last video I did. It was so exciting um, just to find more people on booktube and start having conversations. So yeah, please talk to me in the comments. Let's all be friends. <laughs> That's all I want. Anyway, so I hope I wasn't too terrifyingly nerdy in this video. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys again soon. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.